Hello, I'm Christina Schaffner. I was Professor of Translation Studies at Aston University in Birmingham from 1992 till my retirement in 2015. Before I went to England, I worked and had studied and worked in Leipzig, at first at the University and then at the Saxon Academy of Sciences, of Arts and Sciences. And I spent the time from January 1989 till May 1989 at Kent State University at the Institute for Applied Linguistics, contributing to the graduate program in translation there. I remember that um, the whole contact between Leipzig University and Kent State University goes back to the early 1980s and it started with personal links of professors in American literature from Leipzig, this was Eberhard Brüning, and from Kent State University, names I remember are Sandy Merowitz and Sid Krause. Then in 1985-86, Gregory Shreve came to Leipzig for a whole year and he was attached to the what was then called the Department of Theoretical and Applied Linguistics at Leipzig University. This department trained foreign language teachers and translators and interpreters. And Gregory Shreve was attached to the English Translation Studies Unit and he came along to research seminars we held, meetings we had. At that time, I was working at the Saxon Academy of Arts and Sciences in Leipzig, which was closely related to the university in terms of, of research. And we had conducted research into text linguistic aspects of uh, text analysis, political text, political terminology. And we also had meetings with Greg and discussions, and we actually did a joint research project together, which led to a publication of uh, 1987, it was a procedural analysis of argumentative political text case studies from The Economist. So when Greg was at Leipzig, he also worked closely together with Professor Albrecht Neubert, a very famous scholar in translator training and translation studies. And when he went back to Kent State University, he said, well, look, what I have seen at Leipzig is that they have translator training, something which we don't have here at Kent State University. And he suggested to the then president or the dean to set up a program in translation and establish an, an institute for applied linguistics. So you see also the name Institute for Applied Linguistics was similar to the uh, name of the Leipzig Department Theoretical and Applied Linguistics. So this proposal found uh, support, was very well received by the then president, Odina said, I can't remember the title. I think it was somebody by the name of Schwartz, but I'm not quite sure about this. Also very supportive from the Kent side has always been Mark Rubin, who worked in the international department or department for international relations. So he also came to Leipzig several times. So, um, Albrecht Neubert, whom I had already mentioned, he had supported Greg Schrieff in designing the program, in putting forward the proposal. And also when the proposal had been approved, Albrecht Neubert spent a whole year at Kent State University, and I think this must have been 1987-88, when he was mainly talking to staff members who would then be involved in delivering the translator program. So, but people who had been doing language teaching or research and teaching in the field of literature, but did not have much research experience in translation or translator training. So they needed to understand a bit more what translation is all about. By the way, you can see that I spent time at Kent State here. I still have the t-shirt, which I bought when I was there. So um, this cooperation then between Kent State University and Leipzig University was extended to the field of uh, applied linguistics and translation. And each semester, one colleague from Leipzig University would go to Kent State and contribute to delivering this graduate program in translation. In 1988, these were Klaus Gomlich and then Willy Scherf. When you know that Klaus Gomlich then worked at Kent State University for more than 20 years. And in 89, in the, as I said, from January to May, 
I was there, and then in the second semester, it was my colleague Uwe Wiesemann. So what did, what did I do when I was there? So I must admit that I can't really remember details. I did not have, I don't think I did, any classes where I was responsible my own on, on teaching the course. I mainly did co-teaching with Greg Shreve. So when we had a very small group of students, about eight graduate students on the program then, and um, we talked about textual aspects of translation, genre conventions for translation, uh, translation-oriented source text analysis. Translation was seen pretty much as a mediated communication. Also talked a bit about functionalist approaches to translation. And um, I did not do any practical translation, so no translation between English and, and German as far as I remember. As I said, I probably didn't have that much teaching to do because I used the time at, at Kent to spend quite a lot of time in the library reading books, literature. You must remember I came from East Germany. So while I was there, it was the beginning of the changes which happened in the East then. But um, in East Germany, it was very difficult to get access to English language media to lots of books, journals I'd never seen before. So I also did a lot of photocopying to send these photocopies back home to Leipzig. We also did um, a little research project, Craig Shreve, um, Joe Denks from the philosophy of uh, psychology department and one of his colleagues, when we had looked at whether translators read a text differently. So is there a difference in reading for translation compared to reading just for, for reading or comprehending a text. So this was also turned into an article then. And also I remember that when I was there, Sandy Merowitz, whom I had mentioned before, had organized a conference devoted to literary texts, so literature. I had never worked with literature myself, but I also then decided that as part of this conference, it would be good to give a talk about translation aspects of literary texts, which, which I did, which was also subsequently published. So the Institute at that time had just been set up, it was very, very small, there was no separate building. I had a desk, a small desk, which I shared with Greg in, in his office. Sometimes I worked on the computer in the corridor when Greg was busy when he had consultations. Other members of staff who contributed to the programs I remember were Doris Kadish, and Francoise Massadier Kenny. And there were also guest lectures by uh, invited staff. So I remember also it was at Kent State that I met uh, Sue Ellen Wright and her husband Leland Wright. So they had come to talk about terminology, their particular field, and terminology obviously is something very relevant for translation. Computers were new at that time, so we didn't really have CAT tools students did not work that much with computers for doing their assignments. And then I remember that a job had been advertised for a lecturer in Spanish and translation. And those people who had been shortlisted, they came along to Kent State and also gave a public talk about the research they were doing. And Carol Mayer was the colleague who came along who gave a fascinating talk about her work of poetry translation and who was eventually offered the job. So this also showed um, employing somebody with expertise in literary translation. The Institute was already forward looking. So looking at having a staff or growing the staff with a variety of research expertise. So not limited to applied linguistics or not limited to terminology. So the curriculum at that time, eight, late, eight, uh, late 1980s, so also translation studies as a discipline was still relatively young at that time. So the curriculum was very much focused on aspects of applied linguistics in their relevance for translation, aspects of semantics, pragmatics, text linguistics, and also uh, the book which uh, Albrecht Neuber did together with Gregory Shreve, Translation as Text, published in 1990 showed very much the what uh, our understanding of translation at that time was. So terminology, technology were discussed, but were at that time still in their infancy. 
So that's pretty much my recollection of my time at Kent State University. I enjoyed it very much. It was a long time ago, but um, it was good to see that uh, we did have these links between Leipzig and Kent uh, already in the 1980s. And it's great to see how the program has developed in its nearly 30 years of existence now. And I wish you all good luck in the future.